Hi everyone, my name is Stephen Weigel, and today we're going to talk about the connection between normal orders and prime forms, but without referring to pitch classes. Instead, we refer to large and small step sizes, or the intervallic relationships. These videos document the connections I've discovered between post-tonal theory and large, small-based music theory. So in the last video, we established that a permutation could turn a scalar class set into a normal order. If we divided that permutation by the total number of tones, uh, and dividing by number of tones is the same as putting tones minus one factorial on the top, as you can see here. However, when we have a set with a common factor between all its coefficients, then we had to do a little subtraction before dividing by the total number of tones. This common factor causes a phenomenon in music theory, which we often call transpositional symmetry. Transpositional symmetry is only important when converting from permutation to normal order, shown in the second video. Inversional symmetry is only important when converting from normal order to prime form, which we're about to show. Don't try this one at home, kids. Remember in video one, where the normal order to prime form was discussed? When using L, M, and S, ignoring cycle, the only difference between normal order and prime form is the inversion. A normal order, if its inversion is more compacted to the left, creates a prime form, which means the inversion is a possibility. Some sets, however, when you write them backwards, are just the same either way, like this one here, or this one. Because of this, a normal order will do one of two things when inverted. The normal order either pairs up with its inversion, or it will map onto itself, or be inversionally symmetrical. Uh, this means that normal orders for a scalar class set can be divided into two types, those that are inversionally symmetrical, which simply each count as a prime form, and those that are not inversionally symmetrical. The second kind is divided by two, and added to the first kind to get the total number of prime forms. To write that out again, the number of inversionally symmetrical normal orders plus the number of non-inversionally symmetrical normal orders divided by two is equal to the number of prime forms. Let's work one of these out to see the pattern. For example, 3L3S has four normal orders and three prime forms. See how two of the sets pair up because they invert to each other? And then two other sets are inversionally symmetrical. So two inversionally symmetrical normal orders plus one pair of normal orders equals three prime forms. So what happens when we do a big one, like 6L5S? Phew, that's a lot of work. I wasn't awesome enough to use a computer for all of this, but I would do these while my family watched TV and eventually I spotted a really cool pattern. At this point, you're probably wondering if there's some kind of equation that dictates this. I have looked into it and found a very odd connection between this idea and Pascal's triangle. Here's Pascal's triangle for those of you who haven't seen it before. Now, here's the spreadsheet I made up for scalar class sets in their normal orders and prime forms, but only for two step sizes. Notice a little Pascal in there? Eerie, isn't it? I don't have any proof for this equation yet, but based on the uncanny observation of the pattern of this triangle, I propose the following equation. The funny brackets, by the way, are for rounding up to the nearest integer, so that after every two integers, the number in the brackets goes up by one. This just ensures that the numbers from Pascal's triangle are equal to the inversionally symmetrical normal orders, happening for every plus two of the smaller step. A simpler way to write it could also be this. The equation to plug in Pascal's triangle numbers is just the complex looking part, which really isn't that hard. This is simply a hijacking of the simplest use of binomial coefficients in a factorial equation. 
and that's what holds this equation together. A note, I have only found out this equation, which deals with two different step sizes, or LS sets. Uh, most of my other work can involve middles, but this is one of the exceptions. Anyway, thanks for watching, and now the full chain of permutation to prime form is known. If you want to figure out the equation for three step sizes or more, be my guest, or even better, comment on this video or email me or something. But hopefully I'll beat you to it. <laughs>